today I'm going to show you how to create this interesting spinning cube setup. Not sure really what else to call it. I also came up with this donut shaped variation, which I'll show you at the end. And thanks very much to my patrons and Gumroad supporters. If you want to support me on those platforms, you can, and I'll put those links in the description. This is what our node setup is going to look like. For the material, I'm going to be using that procedural copper material that I made in a previous tutorial and just import it. So if you want that material, you have to watch that tutorial first, or you can just buy it on my Gumroad. To set up our scene, I'm going to change this over to the Cycles Render Engine. You can use Eevee, there's nothing wrong with it. I just like Cycles a little bit better. I'm more used to the settings. I'm also going to change the GPU Compute. Don't worry if you don't have that setting, uh, but it helps my system go a little bit faster. I'm also going to change the max threshold to 0.1. That's just going to help the render times uh, go much faster. We don't really need it set any lower than that. Uh, it's kind of a waste of computing power. I'm also going to grab a material from another tutorial that I made a while back. The material I'm going to grab is from my procedural copper. And I find a really easy way to do this is just to click on the material while hovering over your 3D report, hit Control C. And now back in your other file, uh, just go ahead and hit Control V. And it should import that material in here directly. And I'm just going to move it off to the side here so that it's not visible. It doesn't really matter where it is, uh, but I just don't want it to be in the render. I'm going to bring in an HDRI for my lighting setup. So I'm going to click on World Properties and this yellow circle next to Color. And then click on Environment Texture and then Open. And navigate to where you got some HDRIs. I've got some that I downloaded from HDRI Haven, uh, which I guess is now Polyhaven. But uh, I'm going to use Autumn Park 1K. So just go ahead and click that in. And if you want to make sure it's working, just hold down Z and move your mouse up over top of your 3D viewport and you'll see it in the background. I'm going to turn off the ray visibility on camera so that it continues to light my object but it's not visible in the background. I'm going to change the whole middle area to the Geometry Node Editor, and then change the top right to the 3D viewport. Just make it a little larger so we can see what's going on. And uh, hold down Z and move your mouse up to go into rendered mode up there as well. While over here as well, you can hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. With this cube selected, I'm going to hit the New on the Geometry Node Editor. So it creates a Geometry Node setup along with this cube here. And I'm also going to do two more things. I'm just going to create a second cube and just move it off to the side. And maybe let's just rename this one here. I'm just going to hit F2. And this is going to be our instance cube. So just call it something so you recognize it as different from this here and this here, which is also a cube. It's just like a flattened cube. You see it's cube 0 0.001. And this is cube original. And this is instance cube. So then I'm going to also bring in a Bezier curve. And... Um, you know, let's go back into regular mode here so we can see it. And I'm going to uh, click off that cube there. And let's just make it a little bit bigger too. So if I widen this up here to something like, I don't know, 25 by 2.86 by 0, that's pretty good. And I'm going to open it up and hit N again to get rid of that shelf. If you want to make this bigger, by the way, you can hit Control and Spacebar. And it'll full screen that. So... Uh, with everything selected, I can hit W and subdivide. And let's open this up. I'm just going to create four sections, basically. So it um, doesn't really matter where you put these. We just want to make an interesting curve so that uh, we can have those cubes spinning around this curve. Hit uh, Control Spacebar just to go back. I'm going to hit Alt H to return everything to view. And uh, oh, there we go. So. We've got this cube, we've got the geometry nodes. Let's start working on this setup here. There are a couple different ways I could do this next part. Uh, I'm just gonna split the screen a little bit here and open up an outliner. And then I can take my Bezier curve and actually drag it into the geometry nodes editor here. And it'll be all set up uh, just like this. Alternatively, I could just search for an object info node and then select my Bezier curve here or use that little selector tool right here just to go like that. Anyway, we're gonna put that here so our cube disappears. And uh, now we're basically controlling that Bezier curve with this setup. So I'm going to click back on my cube there, and uh, we can keep going from here. I think I forgot to apply this scale here. If we click on the Bezier curve, yeah, so I've got 12.88 for all those. I'm going to hit Control A and apply that scale. So they should all be 1, 1, 1, just like that. I'm going to click back on my cube here, and let's go ahead and add in an instance on points node, just like this here. And I'm actually going to grab this cube as well, the instance cube, and bring it in here. We can plug geometry into instance. I'm going to move these two cubes uh, over a little bit more. I guess they weren't quite out of the way far enough. So 
whatever, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're not in our render there, it doesn't really matter where they are. And I'm also going to set up my camera view to somewhere around here. So I'm just gonna move my viewport and just hit Control Alt Zero to set my current view as my camera view. So basically what we've got here so far is we've got these cubes instanced on each part where there's uh, kind of a vertice on my curve. So I can change that pretty easily if I want by adding something called a resample curve right before that instance on points. And now this number here is going to control how many cubes there are. So let's set it at 30 for now. And let's set this cube to be smaller. We could either change it right here and apply that scale, or we could just add in a transform node, place it right here, and I'm just going to bring these all down to about 0.1. So now we've got these tiny little cubes here. So next what I want to do is I want to make some concentric circles that go along this uh, curve here that basically instance these cubes on them. So to do that, I'm just going to move these nodes over a little bit. So grab them all at once. And I'm going to duplicate this instance on points and place it right here. And I'm going to bring in a curve circle node. place it right here and let's also bring in a transform node. I'm not going to use it right away but I will use it later so I'll just place it here anyways and I'll plug the curve into geometry and this is going to go into instance right here. So we can see it's kind of working but not quite. I want to reorient these and I can rotate them all at once with this rotation value here but the problem is that they don't really follow this curve here like I want so I'm just going to reset that to zero and let's go ahead and bring in a normal node and uh, one more. Actually, I'm just going to move these out of the way a bit more. I need a bit more space. A normal node and an align Euler to vector node. So there we go. And normal is going to go into the top point here, the rotation. And this rotation is going to go into this rotation right here. And it actually sets it up right away pretty well there. Um, like works pretty much like magic. If we want to move this curve around, we can at any point in time, just adjust it. And uh, everything should follow along quite nicely. I'm gonna click back on my cubes to get my geometry nodes set up back here. And I wanna decrease the amount of cubes in each circle. So I'm gonna decrease this resolution to 16. And then what I'd like to do is get a random orientation, like a random rotation for each of these cubes and random size. So let's start with the random rotation. I'm gonna bring in a random value, place it here, Let's set this to vector, and I'm going to set the max to 90. And let's go ahead and just bring in a math node. We'll leave it set on add. And I'm going to plug this into the top value. This is going to go into rotation. And now if we move this back and forth, we can see that it uh, rotates all our cubes nicely there on all three axes. So I'm going to go ahead and go hashtag frame divided by 20. And now if we hit the space bar, we can see they rotate automatically. If you want them to rotate faster, you could decrease this number. Uh, that's going to be probably a little too fast. If you want them to rotate slower, you know, feel free and increase it. I think frame divided by 20 is going to work pretty well. Okay, now let's do a random size. So I'm going to bring in a random value again. I don't know why I keep trying to spell random with an E. I do know how it's spelled, I swear. I'm going to bring in a math note and set this to multiply. I'll plug this into the top socket there. And this is going to go into scale. So I'm going to bump this up to 0.1 and set the max to 2. And we can control this with the multiply as well if we want. Um, basically, because I've halved it, it's like 0 0.05 to 1 at this point. But we can see now all of our cubes are a different size. So right now, all of these circles are kind of rotated the same amount. I'd like to break that up. So what I'm going to do is move all these over and bring in rotate instances. So let's search that, place it right here, and I'm going to bring in a noise texture to drive these rotations. And let's plug the color into rotation. So this has actually rotated it on all three axes, and I just want to limit it to the Z axis. So let's bring in a vector math node, set this to multiply, and we're going to leave everything at zero except for this bottom value here. Let's set this at something like maybe 7.4. Now we can see each one of these circles is rotated at different amount. I'm going to come over to this transform node right after the curved circle and under the Z rotation, I'm going to set this to hashtag frame 
divided by 100. Did I do that right? I did. Okay, and then if we um, hit the space bar to start things off, we can see now the cubes are rotating and the circles are rotating. And one last thing I could do too is kind of break up these rotations a little bit. I found if I put another transform node right here, I can bring this uh, Z rotation up uh, using maybe just very slight. So I'm going to set this at like frame divided by a pretty high number. Let's try 10,000. So now we can see some are rotating even backwards for a second. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more random. Um, it's totally up to you if you want to do this, but just gave it a bit more variation. They weren't all rotating the exact same way at the exact same speed. We can put a slight bevel on these as well if we want. I'm going to grab our instance cube in the outliner and hit delete slash period to center on our cube. If I open up the modifiers panel, I can add a bevel modifier. And I'm just going to set the amount to 0 0.05 and the segments to 2 or 3, something like that. Uh, you can either go shade smooth right here. I think that'll work. Or you can even go to your geometry node setup there and just add in a set shade smooth node just at the end here. Lastly, let's add our material on here because right now, if you go into rendered mode, these are just still the clay material. So I'm going to go ahead and add a set material node just at the very end. If we open this up, we should see our material. I've got my copper material that I imported at the very beginning, so I can just select that. And now we've got our copper material on these cubes. So one thing I was trying to figure out but I couldn't is how to get these cubes kind of spiraling around this curve here while also moving down it. Uh, down this way here. Uh, I have a feeling I'll figure it out eventually, but it's just something I couldn't quite figure out. But I'll show you another variation that I came across I thought was pretty cool. So let me show you this variation that I came up with. I'm going to duplicate this here and just hide the original. And I'll also come up here and click this so we've got a new geometry node set up. So if I make changes to this one here, it's not going to change that original one. I'm going to go ahead and sever this right here. And in fact, why don't we just get rid of those all together. I'm going to bring in another curved circle. Place it right here. We'll plug this into the geometry right here. And um, I don't know why this is still looking like this. There we go. For some reason, it didn't update. Uh, I'm going to change this radius to 2. And let's set this back to 32. We can change that if we want. Then I'm going to come down here to the Y and click that. Um, I'm not sure how to get rid of this frame 100 thing here. If I set it to something else, it's just going to still... Oh, maybe it... Well, whatever. I'm going to get rid of this here and bring in another transform node. Just reset it. And I'm going to change the X and the Z to 90. And then let's come over here and this multiply node right after the noise texture. I'm going to change this to something like 20 and change that to 0 at the end. You know, the last thing I had to do was just change this from rotation to vector for this input here. For some reason it worked on the other one. Not sure why it didn't work on this one, but this is what seems to work. So now we have this interesting donut shape here. If we press play, they're all going to be rotating in different directions at different speeds, and the cubes are going to be rotating as well. So pretty cool effect. Um, I liked this one as well. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you can see how you would change this around. For instance, you know, these are probably a little too close together, so maybe I'll decrease this to something like 24, something like that, and maybe decrease the maximum size over here to 1.5, maybe, so they're a little smaller. Um, I could also come over here and just increase this radius to 2.5, something like that. And now we're not uh, having those cubes colliding with each other. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, but otherwise, thanks for watching.